You hear laughing from the other room, but you're home alone. A knock at the door, and the black-eyed children want you to let them in. You drive by that abandoned house that everyone says is haunted, and a figure is standing in the window. You go for a hike, and you experience missing time. How long were you gone, and where did you go? You're camping, and you hear a voice calling you in the woods, but that sounds like your own voice. Every town in the world has its scary stories. This is the Local Legends Podcast. Welcome back to the Local Legends Podcast. My name is Bert Moran. This is episode three. Today with me, I have my good friend Curtis from Purgatory Adventures YouTube channel. Hello. And go ahead and introduce yourself there, Curtis. Tell us a little my bit about name... yourself. All right, my name is uh, Curtis. I am a paranormal investigator with the YouTube channel Purgatory Adventures. I've been a paranormal investigator with uh, Purgatory Adventures now for three years, coming up on three years. I've been investigating myself for 10 this year. Uh, yeah, we've investigated many different haunted locations all over uh, Saskatchewan. And uh, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I had a few questions for you. My main, like one of the first questions, not my main question, because I have a lot of questions. When, how old were you whenever you first experienced anything paranormal? And can you tell us about that experience? Yes, I was, uh, I remember that I was 12, actually. I went on my first investigation at a uh, place called Curdle Farm. Uh, it is still one of my scariest, uh, adventures to this day. I went with my uncle, uh, Nathan, he took me there to this farm uh, for my first ever paranormal investigation there. And uh, it was one of the most terrifying, I must say. It was uh, the first time ever I was attacked by something I couldn't see. Um, it was the first time where I witnessed what the paranormal could do or what it even was. Because at the time I was 12, and I really didn't understand it or know anything really about it, but... You know, when I went to this farm and I seen some of the stuff that was happening there, some of the crazy stuff. Um, like, for instance, I remember first time ever walking into that house, into that farmhouse. And I remember, I remember it feeling like almost like a racetrack of like this energy, like swirling around in the house. And it was insane. It felt like someone had like a fridge turned on high and it was blasting at you. Oh, That's wow. what the feeling was at the front door of this place. It was absolutely insane. And I remember walking from the main house to the bug laboratory. And I remember getting attacked. I got three scratches that went down my arm. And it started to blister where where those scratches were. And it was a, it was a very terrifying experience. And it sort of opened my mind up to what else could be out there. And it made me want to go find more. Like, it made me want to go out and try to find more of this, so. Absolutely. Whenever, okay, so you've been attacked, like, been scratched. How, how, where, like, what exactly was going on? Were you at the door? Were you by yourself? I mean. I was, uh, I I was actually, uh, I was walking from the main house to a different building on the property, which was called the, the Bug Laboratory. I was walking from there, and in between there, I got just scratched, so. Oh, my God. Um, That was, like, on your inner arm? Is that what I saw you Yeah, doing? yeah, it was on this part of the arm right here. Okay. Yeah. God, dang. Um, I know in one of your videos, you came across a deer, and that had um, yes. that That rotting... was the return location. That was the return to that, that, that place. That's right. That it was, was the return that to that. That video was the return, yeah. Now, have you ever heard of the phenomenon of the not deer? Uh, definitely not. No. Okay, so like the so like a big um kind of an urban legend situation that uh focuses on deer that just aren't quite right. That they look different. Some of them have sharp teeth. Some of them just look at you and follow you with their eyes. Um, you know, a lot of them are described with you know how a deer will have a uh, eye on either side of its head. A lot of these not deer have their eyes focused right in front, mm-hmm. but a lot of them are jittery, shaky animals, just like the one that you experienced uh, 
encountered, which obviously is like, I was just wondering, cause when I first saw that video, I thought maybe you'd come across that kind of phenomenon where it was, uh, some kind of a weird creature, which obviously it was just a, de- a deer, not just, it was yeah. pretty interesting to watch that unfold the way yeah. that deer was throwing itself around that, uh, yeah, I don't know. What what was your first thought whenever you saw that deer? We thought it was possessed, actually. We thought that, you know, that some haunting from Cradle Farm has possessed the deer and it's, like, doing stuff. But we actually realized that uh, we actually had to call a game warden for yep. that. Um, and, and they came in and basically told us that uh, the deer had something called brain worm. Basically what it is, it's a worm that... Uh, Basically, you catch it, it climbs, they catch it from eating another animal, or base, right? Oh. And then it attacks their brain, and uh, it makes them do all sorts of weird stuff, so. Okay, yeah, um, I remember watching that and thinking that, man, there's definitely some creepiness to that, because I know that yeah. you guys went out there, were, you guys were spending the night out there, weren't you? Was that we, were, we were going to actually, uh, we had a tent that we brought, and we were going to set it up and sleep in the tent on the property, but... Uh, yeah, there's some stuff happened and we couldn't do that. Uh, okay. Um, now, obviously, the paranormal is what we investigate. We go out there, we look for these things, and we, a lot of times, we have some pretty interesting experiences. But have you ever had an experience with something that wasn't paranormal? Like out on an investigation one time, I came across a mountain lion, and that was a scary situation. I was wondering if you've ever ran into anybody or any animal, uh, any kind of situation that's not ideal for a paranormal investigator to be in <laughs> um i at the uh the tommy douglas building we were doing our sleepover investigation where we spend the night and uh it was probably five o'clock four o'clock in the morning and the janitor comes in to clean and we're sleeping on the floor in the basement <laughs> Nobody told the janitor you guys were going to be there. Nobody told the janitor that we were going to be there. And he shows up and he's like, "We're here. To, I'm here to clean. What are you guys doing? He was like freaking out. We're freaking out. And it's he's like, probably ready to call the cops. On? Oh, yeah. It was like. It oh, my was, God. Like, That's amazing. I bet he was. <laughs> he probably thought you guys obviously broke in. And the, the funny part is this is the night before Halloween. <laughs> oh, no. So, yeah. The like, night before Halloween. He comes That's to like a. Him. We're in the bed sleeping there. That's like a so. perfect time for pranks and everything. Yeah. So they're probably it actually like... it made it into our video actually. So uh you'll have to go check that out. It's the uh Tommy Douglas Performing Arts Center Halloween special video. Uh it was a crazy investigation. I think I, I started that one where you guys were at the beginning of the video, you edited it, so you were like, Is somebody in there or hello? No, yeah, I was like, it was... well, maybe it's got some good paranormal evidence, but <laughs> it's just a janitor. It was crazy, it was the janitor that came in. Oh my god. Yeah. You're lucky that he didn't come in swinging or something. Yeah, no doubt, right? Oh, my God. Draw his baseball been... bat with him or something. Exactly. Oh, that would have been <laughs> insane. That's amazing. Yeah, what... it was uh, pretty scary. <laughs> what would you say has been, hands down, the scariest thing since you've started your YouTube channel that you've experienced? Because I know that you, you've been hunt ghost hunting and investigating for years since you were 12 and 10 years 10 years 10 but, years this year i started in 2013 but your youtube um, channel is uh what three years old three years old now yeah. yeah so scariest thing hands down since i started the uh channel would have to be the footsteps running down the stairs at us twice at the tongue douglas building yeah so i I, rem- um, I remember watching that and that's like some of the clearest footsteps that you, i was like what, what? This is me about that is on our third uh our third trip to that location the third time ever during our halloween special investigation we had another paranormal investigator that's actually from saskatchewan he lives in saskatchewan here's another he does tiktoks okay and we invited him on that investigation with us and we were downstairs in the basement and we heard those exact same footsteps come down the stairs but this time it was on the opposite stairs across from the stairs where it originally happened. So oh. that that was, pans down, the scariest thing that's happened to us. And to catch that twice in a row, but on two different separate stairs, can't explain that. Oh my god. I remember watching, you got on Nuke's Top 5's uh, big YouTube channel, a uh, big paranormal one. 
Nuke's top five. Weren't you on Nuke's top five at one point? No, never. I'm pretty never sure. on Nuke's top five. That's if I, I if you I were was, <laughs> weren't you? I made it on to Chills. I know that. Oh, Chills is the one I'm thinking chills, of. Yeah. Sorry, Chills. I, I recently, we actually, I actually made it on there again recently. I'm in there oh. one of their newest videos. So. Perfect. I remember on Chills, you were. I can't remember which building it is. Probably, I can't remember. But the door. Oh, made a district museum. That's yeah, the door was. opened That's on a, its own. Very famous. For some reason that the people YouTubers seem to love that location. So the first time we went there, uh, we had the door open on us. The second time we went there, we captured the most amazing paranormal evidence we've ever captured. And I even made a little shirt of it here. That I, I remember watching channel. on your uh, <laughs> uh, SLS camera, whatever yes, that came yes. on there. That was very impressive. And it was waving to us. We could yeah. actually see the spirit waving, I, and it seemed to interact with what we were doing. So I, uh, I thought that was just amazing. I remember watching that door open, and I'm like, how is that happening? What is going on? Like, it's very obviously a great location. It is. It was a great one. And what makes it even more amazing is when we did the return and we captured the SLS figure, the door did not open like that for the entire night. Yeah. It was shut the entire night we tested that door on the second time around we tested that we tried everything possible to get that door to do what it did in the first round and we could not get it to do that so that tells me right there what what else could it be you know like we even did it on a, on, on a windy day like we went back on a windy day there was like 50 kilometer winds outside right and we try to replicate that and the door would not move so i Still to this day, I can't, I can't explain it. That is such a good video. Now, I remember I've seen, um, God, uh, there's another YouTuber that reacts to reacts to videos, and he was talking about that, and he was just like stunned to see that as well. Yeah, and, it was great. No, that was, like I said, that was a great location and just a great video all the way around. It. Now, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, go on ahead, please. I think it would be cool to go back for a third time, I believe, and uh, bring other people in, you know, people that, that are watching our channel and, you know, seeing what we're doing. I think it'd be interesting to bring some people in and have them witness it and see what will happen when you bring fresh, you know, fresh blood in there and, you know, see what the spirits will do, see how they will react. I think that would be kind of interesting to see. Absolutely. So uh, that might be something we look at in the future of doing. Absolutely. Um, you're, you're out of Canada, Saskatchewan, right? Yeah. Yes. Saskatchewan. Yeah. So is it that there's not a lot of Canadian paranormal investigators? Is that what I'm hearing? Cause I know that you guys are making some pretty, uh, big moves down there. You guys are getting into magazines, uh, and chills, uh, newspapers. There's really nobody out there that's doing it quite like we are. Uh, lots of the paranormal investigators that uh, are around here focus their content onto TV, onto a local TV uh, broadcasting site called the Access 7 channel. Okay. I know a few, uh, a few teams that broadcast onto there, but we're broadcasting at a larger scale, right? Like we're broadcasting our stuff onto YouTube, onto Twitter, onto TikTok, stuff like that and other people are kind of seeing it and kind of picking up on it and when these other people you know they're kind of just sticking in locally right and we're, we're kind of going worldwide so that's kind of uh it's kind of why you know saskatchewan's not really known for the paranormal side because everyone yeah. stays local so whenever you go to like a new town uh for a investigation something like that you ever run into people that are like oh what are you guys doing in town blah blah, blah. <laughs> And then you have to tell them, you know, well, we're here to hunt ghosts and try and catch the paranormal on camera. Does anybody ever, like, give you, like, a, a sideways look for that? Because I know whenever oh, I yes. go out to places, I get that a lot where people are like, oh, okay. That's All the mean. time. But one thing that I found about doing this is people are mostly interested in it. People are interested oh, yeah. to know what we're doing, which is quite opposite to what I thought would happen when we started doing the channel. I thought people would be like why are you doing this or like you know like kind of weirded out by it but it's been quite uh the other way around people have been very interested in it and kind of curious about it so i remember when we went to uh um i remember when we went to indian head screaming house up in uh, indian head we uh 
we walked the streets actually and we were interviewing people on the, on the street and it was very interesting to see you know how people reacted and the stories that people had to tell and uh most for most of the part people had a story to tell about it and you know people were very interested and it was kind of different from how i thought it was gonna work out i thought people would, there'd be no you know people would be like get lost or why are you filming you know what i mean yeah but yeah people were very interested and very uh they had stories to tell so i thought that was kind of different um that's yeah. that's one of the things like i've noticed is no matter where you go or who you talk to and there's like a lot of non-believers which is totally fine and I've been told, you know, hey, you got to prove that I, I'm just, I'm a non-believer. You got to prove to me that ghosts exist. And I say, no, I don't have to prove to you anything. I go out and I film locations and the paranormal. I catch things on camera and I'm just filming my experiences. So really anything, it's up to you to believe it or not. So I like to tell people, you know, like one of the main things, even people who are skeptics, once somebody starts talking about when I was a kid, I saw this or whenever I was younger, actually, I thought I saw a ghost, but I'm not sure what I saw. Eventually, it seems like everybody had a paranormal story. Everybody's like, well, one time I did see a cup fly off the shelf and smack against the wall and I didn't know what it was. So I just left the house and it's like, OK, that's paranormal. And I remember I was interviewed for that book that's coming out in July and we were talking for a long time and I, you know, the guy was asking me questions, but the the main question was like, um, why are people so in, interested in the paranormal and stuff like that? And, uh, I tell him, you know, a lot of people forget that this isn't new, that the, uh, paranormal uh, happenings have been going on for ghosts stories are not a new thing they've been going on since the dawn of history people have been seeing spectral images of a lady on the staircase all kinds of ghosts so paranormal is a word that people focus on but the fo the part that they need to focus on in that word is the normal part because it's been around forever this is i 100 percent agree with you um i think they they started becoming more like paranormal phenomena started happening more when cameras were invented because you could take a picture of it yeah you know and show people and that's when it kind of started and that was that was a long time ago and I think the late the the lady on the stairs is a very uh, a very popular uh, paranormal photo I think any paranormal investigator can will know what that is so. oh absolutely and like. Uh... The people who see these ghost hitchhikers, uh, Resurrection Mary, stuff like that. The woman on the side of the road, they give her a ride, and then by the time they get to the destination, she's already disappeared from the car. These stories were before anybody was filming anything. Somebody experienced something that was not usual, but like the word, I don't know, I just like I said, focus on the normal part of it, because it's been around forever. It's been around for a very, very long time. So now... I know in my family, we've all pretty much experienced paranormal stuff. Well, not just me, but my parents. Has your family, parents, anybody like that ever had any ghost stories that you'd feel comfortable sharing? <laughs> my family is all non-believers, believe it or not. <laughs> That's awesome. My entire family doesn't believe in the paranormal. My mom, my dad, brother, they don't believe in the paranormal. They think it's uh, not real. Um I remember growing up, you know, and, and I was 12 when I started investigating the paranormal, right? Yeah. And I went on a very scary paranormal investigation, one that I will never forget. Uh, this is a different one. This is after Cradle Farm. Okay. Um, I'll tell. I'll talk about that later. But uh, anyways, um, I went on a very scary investigation, and I actually had something follow me home, back to my home, right? And there was stuff happening in the house when there was no one around. When it was just me in there, in the house by myself, there was actually stuff happening. I remember doors opening, cupboards closing, lights flickering. Like, scary stuff was happening. And my family wasn't experiencing it. It was just me. So yeah. I was there by myself. And I remember, you know, I, I would I told Nathan about it. And he came over and... uh 
he told me that it actually grabbed his arm and it burnt him. Like whatever was there was bad. I used to have to wake up in the middle of the night and I had a Bible that would sit beside me and I, ha- I would read from it and I'd tell it to leave me alone because yeah. it was there and I could feel it, you know, like it was an intense feeling. And I'll never forget the day that it left. It was, I had a weird dream one. I had a really weird dream. And then the next day it was gone. And this weird dream, I had a, uh, it was a cloaked figure came and visited me in my sleep. He had a full cloak on a white ball of light in his chest. And I reached out and grabbed the ball of light. I got pulled in and then it like, I heard this voice. It was like a, gr- uh, like a gargly voice spoke to me and said, evil is dead. And then I woke up. And when I woke up, I was in, like, full sweats, like, sweat. Yeah, yeah. Like, all over. Like, it was just, like, the most intense dream I've ever had. And just before I saw the cloak figure, I was in, like, this world. And it was, like, gray, black. B- down below, it was, like, got darker. And up higher, it was, like, beams of light coming down. And it was, like, I was floating in this endless world. And then there's like, this cloaked figure beside me. And then I reached out and I woke up. And then after that, it was gone. I, it, it's been uh, nine years, and I've had it has not returned back. So I don't know what um, happened. Yeah. Um, also, before the stream, I had it was terrifying. I heard a man and a woman like shouting at each other. It was like coming from right in my bedroom. Wait, I would follow yeah, the, the sound. Yeah. What was this? It would. This is nine years ago. This is oh, just okay. before, like, this is just before, like, this stop. Like, this is the, the stuff leading up. So I had, I, it sounded like a man and a woman. It was, like, shouting at each other. And I'd follow the sound, and it'd be, like, right in front of me. Like, there'd be nowhere else I could go. There's no no one home, no neighbors around. And the shouting's, like, happening in my house. There's nothing on. And it would just went on for, like, a long time. I was freaking out because... You can hear a man and a woman yelling at each other, but there's yeah. no one there's no one around. There's nothing on. There's no way. And then I had that dream, and then after that it was gone. So and then it's been nine years, so that, I don't know. It's still one of the scariest things that has ever happened to me. And it almost made me quit doing this. So at one point I'm guessing that like the voices were still screaming at each other. They must have felt like you were like right they were like right in front of you. You felt like you probably could have reached out and touched them if they were there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh my exactly god, exactly what it felt like. It was terrifying. Um, I believe to this day that it probably was my guardian angel looking out for me and protecting me from whatever attached itself to me from this investigation. So yeah, that's that is why that is why paranormal investigations are dangerous because you never know what you're gonna bring home with you. Man, that is some interesting stuff. I tell you what, that's that you're you're right. You don't know what's coming back with you. I've had experiences like that where stuff has moved on me, or I've been pushing my own house, uh, stuff like that after an investigation. And like you were talking about how you had the Bible there with you. Now, whether you believe in the Bible or God or not, yeah, I believe that the Bible itself and the passages in it do have power in them over certain things in the paranormal mm-hmm. field, because people have used those same passages same prayers so much that even if you don't believe in god or whatever we're not going to get into that but those passages do have a certain amount of power because there's that much belief in them and they've been used forever for as long as the bible has been around and that's damn near forever i 100 percent agree with you the the bible is a very powerful uh tool to use against um evil spirits that that are there that are present so absolutely it's it's very impressive and interesting because i hear stories like that all the time where people you know experience something in front of them it's not there or something follows them or pushes them or scratches them and it's i've had people who are non-believers tell me stories like about I won't say any names, but if they ever hear this, they know exactly who I'm talking about because they used to give me crap all the time about being a paranormal investigator. Then they tell me the story about whenever they were younger and they were in their room 
They're sitting on their bed and nobody else is there and stuff started flying out from underneath their bed and there was nobody under their bed, but their stuff was just being thrown across their room. And they get up and they leave. He's like, but I don't think, I don't believe that was paranormal. I don't know what it was, but it wasn't paranormal. I, and they, I know what it was, but I don't want to say what it was. I don't want to say it was paranormal. So I'm not going to say it's paranormal. I'm like, okay, whatever. But I've heard people all over this town have seen shadow people. You know, experience sleep paralysis. Have you ever experienced anything like sleep paralysis? Uh, never. Uh, my mom has sleep paralysis, though. So she's uh. told me stories about it. She never has ever looked, though. She's never opened her eyes. She keeps her eyes closed when she's in the sleep paralysis state. I have never experienced it, and I never want to. No. Because I've heard stories about it. My, my mom has had it happen to her, and it is terrifying like she told me sometimes she feels like there's hands grabbing at her and stuff like that and like she's never opened her eyes though because she said that some of the stuff that you could see uh could scar you like it, it's horrifying oh, yeah. it's like a waking nightmare <laughs> that yeah the people who have have to experience those things i do i do feel for them because the, what a terrible feeling in the first place not being able to move and then those who do open their eyes and they see some kind of creature. And one of the creatures or the, the things that people see that always kind of creeped me out was uh, the old hag story. Have you ever heard about that one? Which people I have, yes. The, yes. the lady sitting on the chest and like feels like they're yeah. sucking the life out of you. That'd just be. What? Uh, there's also a faceless creature. Faceless Jack, I think it is, right? Yep. I believe you that's see, the He name. has no face. Yep. And yep. he's supposed to be one of the there's... demons you're supposed to see. There's that, and then there's uh, uh, the dog. There's like a big dog uh, hellhound that oh, yeah. people see barking yeah. in their face. Um, one of the popular ones is somebody called, I believe it's the Hat Man. A lot of them see a guy with a top hat in their room. I haven't like, heard of that one before. I've heard of, of Jack and uh, the Hag, but I haven't heard of that one. Yep, I've heard of um, the Top Hat Man or something like that they call him. And I also hear that one a lot in uh, Native American culture in the area where I grew up was uh, always a, a top hat person was one of the ones that they've always talked about. So that's kind of interesting. Hmm. Now you, uh, is it your cousin that you go with? My uncle. Your uncle, that's what it is. Yeah. Okay, and uh, how long has he been into this? Uh, Probably three years before me, so I've been 10, so he's probably been doing it 13, 14 years. Okay. Has he ever told you any stories of the time before you and him started working together of anything that would be, like, terrifying to him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's told me some stories <laughs> from uh, that, that same place, Criddle Farm. That's where he used to go. That's how I found out about it. Um, he went there before, and it he it, they didn't have a good time. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> Fair um, enough. <laughs> he, uh, they brought the Holy Bible with them, right? And, yeah. Um, I, he told me the story. He took the Holy Bible and he threw it on the front step of that place. And the Bible like literally opened up and started flipping through pages and landed on a page where it says, everyone shall die or whatever like that in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. And then they're like, whoa. And they step back and the front door to the farm opened, swung open and a black shadow figure came out of the building. That was one of the uh, the things they they seen um he told me also that he's seen a black shadow figure crawl on the walls and the ceiling of that place like it crawled up the wall and oh uh, on the roof and uh my auntie went with them and she got possessed actually she got oh, possessed wow. she was like it took so you know you know how big nathan is right yeah yeah it took nathan my other uncle and uh, my auntie's daughter to move her. She would not move. It was like trying to move a wall. Oh, my God. Like, she was frozen solid. She could not move. She was frozen. And uh, just stiff as a board. Could not move. A and it took four of them. And finally, she snapped out of it. And she's like, whoa, what's happening? And then they left. But Oh, my God. Um, yeah. That place was insane, though. Like, some of the, the, the EVPs that have been captured at that location are phenomenal, are just absolutely incredible. Uh, what else? Um, 
So back in the day, my uncle yeah. was not a respectful paranormal investigator. He did something bad. Uh-oh. <laughs> he went and stepped on, tromped on the graves at the farm that are there. That's, a, and, that, that's always a big no-no. Yeah, big no, no, no. But when you're, he was probably twenty some at the time, and you know, he was just into drinking and partying. He didn't care about the paranormal. Thought it was all, he didn't believe in it, right? He was a non-believer, and he went to the cemetery, and he's like, "Okay, this isn't real." And started tromping on the graves, and then all this started happening. He got attacked on the back so bad that three, you could see three claw marks go down his back. And there, he told me that there was, like, blood coming out of it. You could see, like, blood coming down. Oh, my God. And he was in the, the maid's quarters, and they were standing on the stairs, and they could hear footsteps running up the stairs at them. And it went through them, and then it went back down the stairs. It was insane. And then at that time, when it went through them, they got the claw marks down the, down the back. Jesus. So, what what's the story there at the cradle farms because i you know so, you, you hear stories about like oh the lady jumped to her death and now every night you hear her screams what's it's what's a the rumor story? this is this is rumored now this isn't like factual uh i can't find anything on it this is just like the uh the uh brandon myth i guess you could say it is but the myth is is that uh or legend i guess it'd be the local legend the local legend is they the say the local legend is <laughs> <laughs> you hear it all the time that's why you i love that name time, yeah. <laughs> anyways the local legend of that place is that um a man brought his family over from uh i can't remember where the, and they settled on brandon manitoba which is the cradle farm and uh he was a scientist actually he had a bug laboratory uh and one night he was out in his bug laboratory and he mixed the chemical together and it blew up in his face. And oh. basically he went mad and grabbed an axe, blew his whole family into the basement, killed them all with an axe, and then hung himself in his room upstairs. Oh my and God. now when you go to Cradle Farm, well, when he went back there before 2013 or 2014, when he went there before then and he went into the house, there'd be a fence over the, over the basement. You could not go down to the basement. And it's said that four, that three people have died in the basement. They curled up in a corner and died because they were too afraid to leave the, the basement. That is a story that I heard about the farm. Uh, again, don't know if it's factual. Could be, it could, might not be real, but that is just a story that I heard about it. Uh, and then they had to chain the basement off because of the deaths in the basement. So. Have you been to now, the basement? I have not been to the basement, but I have seen the chain on, like, I have seen it locked, so. See, ah, um, uh, see, that's my problem. If somebody tells me, like, oh, that's the scariest part, well, that's kind of the part I want to go see. Exactly. So I, have you had any, like, ambition to go in the basement? The basement does not exist. The house actually burnt down oh, in no. 2014. Yeah. So when we went back to Cradle Farm, we just went back to see the property because the, the right. house is gone. Uh, it burnt down in 2014. I was there in 2013, so it burnt down a year after we left. So That's um, terrible. It is terrible. The kids burnt it down. But um, there was a, actually a pentagram, or what I believe to be a pentagram, on the top floor. You go into the one bedroom, and it's like drawn out. But it's like a weird-looking pentagram. Yeah. I've never seen one look like that. It's got six points to it. So I'm not sure if it's really a pentagram or not, but, uh, and I can't, I don't know what it is. I, like, I could probably find a picture of it or a video of it, because this guy that walks through the house and he looks at it, but, um, I don't know what it is. Uh, yeah. I call it a pentagram because that's what it looks similar to, yeah. but I don't believe it is. And I believe that whatever that is may also contribute to what's there. Okay. That's interesting. But the weird part is we went back. We went back to that farm last year to do another investigation there and to see if it was still there. And what's very interesting about it is the activity is gone. There is no activity on that farm now with the house gone. Really? So I believe that that farmhouse was a portal to hell, basically, because now the house is gone. There's no activity there. It's very, very, very slow. So not like it was 
10 years ago, nine years ago, 10, 10 years ago. That reminded me of, I was watching like new stuff five years ago. And there was a story of a haunted uh, farmhouse, very similar situation. And the guy who owned it decided to tear the place down. And it was like at night. And as he's tearing it down, he looks up in the window and he sees this figure of this woman staring at him. Like the place is always haunted. But as he's destroying the house, like the figure showed up. And after the house got destroyed, there was no more uh, paranormal happenings there. So that's very weird. It's like almost identical to the story that you're telling me here. That you believe it's a portal because it's either that or else the 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 house itself is what was haunted, what was keeping the spirits. Kind of makes there. me wonder, like, where do they go, right? Like, where do these spirits go to when the building is gone, right? Like, do yeah. they hang around? Do they go to the building nearest? Like, what happens if there's nothing to go to, right? Like, what exactly. happens? It's just like uh, whenever somebody dies, their energy energy is always moving, it's always transferring, it's always becoming something else. When so, whenever we pass, what happens to our energy? Do we become spirits like these ghosts have or after their houses that they're haunted, the ones that get destroyed, are they then free to roam around and actually go and do anything or they go to heaven or hell or how does that work? I have no idea. Very, very interesting. Well, one day we'll know for ourselves. We'll all find out. We'll all Um, find out. (laughs) This happens to me, like not all the time, but it's happened a few times where I'd go out and I'd ghost hunt. And sometimes... Like, one of the things that you know is you don't always catch something. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's not like a lot of people think. And if, if you ever come across a YouTube channel or a, a, a paranormal investigator that goes out and catches amazing evidence every single time they go out, there's a good chance that guy's a freaking liar. But <laughs> has it ever happened to you? Because I know it's happened to me where I've gone to a place and I filmed and nothing, like, amazing happens. But, it, you know, you're still there. You're still experiencing a great time. You put away your camera equipment, you're you're leaving for the for the night, and then something happens. Has that ever happened to you? Never, actually. I've never had that happen. I have had locations that have gone to where nothing has happened. Yeah. And we just didn't upload the video. It's only happened once in the three years I've been doing this channel. And usually that's why we put a ton of research into a location before we just pack up and go. Yep. Because we could be spending that time investigating a real haunted location, right? Instead of one where it's just kind of boring, right? Yeah. Uh, but usually in the 12, 13, 14 hours, we're at a location. We always cap, we always come up with something at the end. So that makes us feel good. But, That's good. uh, but there's only been one location ever where we've walked out with nothing but disappointment. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, it happens. Like, you can't yeah. have activity happening all the time a lot of people forget that whenever a house is haunted or somebody reports uh, being in a haunted house that these people like you say you've been there 14 hours that person has been living there for a year and a half you know what i mean and they're experiencing maybe five things that happen that oh that's extremely weird that i keep hearing footsteps on the staircase every other week or something like that but yeah if we're there you're there for 14 hours you don't capture anything that doesn't mean that the place isn't haunted. It just means that there's They're no, just not nothing there. happening right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, yeah, in literally in in the the three years you've been doing Purgatory Adventures, it's only happened once, and that was at the very beginning of our channel. Like I guarantee that was I think that was maybe first year ever of doing the channel. We went to a place called uh, I can't remember the name. It was a farmyard, anyways. It was in the Capel Valley. And we went there at nighttime, and it started raining mid-investigation. And we had to pack up and leave. And then we packed up and left, waited for the rain to stop. We went back out and got down there. And then the animals started picking up, and there was, like, coyote packs nearby. So we had to leave again, and we just said, to hell with the video. We literally just said, we're not making this video, and we left. So Oh, my God. It was a waste of time, but... I can't even remember what farm it was. All I know is in the it was in the Capel Valley, and I got a really cool screensaver from it too, though. So <laughs> I think it may have been worth it. There you go. As long as you found something <laughs> useful out of it, that's pretty awesome. What are like? Is there anybody that uh, could be an author, another researcher, anybody that you've ever like looked up to that you would like to meet or work with in the future? Because. Uh meet or work with there's lots of people that i would like to do a collaboration that i think would be very that that i think would be very cool 
Um, not so much like an author, but there's a, a, a local Saskatchewan paranormal investigation team around here. I think it'd be cool if we teamed up with them if we did an investigation, you know, locally. I think that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Also, there's a psychic medium that I know that's pretty popular around here that I think would be a cool collaboration. So. Oh, that would be awesome. Um, we I, I talked to a psychic whenever I went out to um, Gitchy Manitou State Preserve here in South Dakota. Well, actually, it's in the corner of Iowa and South Dakota, so it's more Iowa. But I talked with her because she had some paranormal experiences out there, and she was a psychic lady. And... Uh, Donna O'Day is her name, if anybody is looking for an uh, amazing medium in the Sioux Falls area. And yeah, she was a great person to just talk to, and she's just so helpful with information, spiritual guidance, and it's amazing. So I, I say absolutely, if you get a chance to work with that psychic or talk to that psychic that you're talking about, go for it. I Definitely. Go. I, I think I am. I, I think it will. I think it'd be very interesting to see what they pick up on. Especially if we go to a location we've already been to before, yeah, and see if we can and tell them nothing about what's been happening, and see if we can connect some of our evidence to what they're saying. I think that would be very, very interesting put, to see. Put them to the test. Put them to the test. See if they're legitimate or not. Exactly. That's awesome. Do you have a location? Now it could be anywhere in the world. Like your top of where you'd like to go. Yes. Ooh, that's one of the things I wanted to ask you because I Yes. I know I have some. I figured everybody who is into this oh. field has the places, their Mecca uh, <laughs> location that they want to go to. I want to go to Mineral Wells, Texas. Ooh. And I want to investigate either the Velisca Axe Murder House or the Haunted Hill House. Those are the top top two. Okay, so Velisca Axe Murder House is in Iowa. Is it in Iowa? I thought it was in Mineral Wells. Maybe I'm getting places nope. confused. That's fine. No, nope. Velisca Axe Murder House is in Iowa. I was actually in Iowa. Okay. I was actually really close to there. It was within like an hour or two from there when I went down to the Van Meter Visitor Festival. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, me and the guys from the Hollow Sky Podcast, we were talking about getting together, doing a collaboration, and that was one of their was the uh, Velisca Axe Murder House, and how terrifying of a story that is. We'd all, we'd all talked about that. And... Either that place or the Haunted Hill House. I know that yep. the people that actually own that, they actually followed my Twitter page. That's how really? I found out about it. Yeah, they did. They followed my Twitter page. That's awesome. And I started looking into that location. I'm like, that is awesome. That's amazing. Some of the, some of the evidence that was on their, uh, on their Twitter page blew me away. People getting dragged down the stairs. Oh, my God. Like, this guy, I remember seeing on their Twitter page, a guy gets up to get something, and he physically gets thrown to the ground. Uh, I've seen another one where a guy got dragged out of bed, like, pulled, ripped out of the bed, and thrown to the ground, and they were out. Like, some of the security camera footage, because they have security cameras that cover the entire place. Yeah. I think it would be a cool location to go to, and... It's been it's been on my bucket list just to see if what's if what is there is actual or if it's fake. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Is it put on for the tourists or is it legitimate? Oh man. Okay, so that's amazing. I wanted since you told me that story and you mentioned the Velisca Axe murder house, did you hear about what happened with one paranormal investigator? I don't know. Like just bringing the story up, if somebody mentioned it to me like this, and it's going to be very vague. Did you hear about what happened to the paranormal investigator? I believe it was in 2013 that visited the place. The Velisca. I Axe. have not. No. Okay, they even made a movie about the Velisca Axe Murder House called the Velisca Axe Velisca Axe Murder House. And at the end of the movie they say what happened in 2013 was before after they filmed the film and had nobody got hurt while they were filming the movie. But this paranormal investigator, I don't know the name of the guy, but him and I believe it's two other people were investigating the house. The guy went to the attic where the guy who murdered the family was hiding out that night. And while the other guys were investigating downstairs, something possessed the guy to stab himself in the chest. Like to actually like stab the he, guy? He, he, he did it. He took a knife out and he stuck himself right in the chest. Is this actual or is this, this like no? A, this is an actual thing. This it's is actual. Like news reports. Uh, at the end of the movie, they even mentioned like somebody did stab themselves in the thing, but that had nothing to do with this movie. So, the guy was rushed to the hospital. He made it, and they asked him why he did it. If I remember correctly, he said he had no idea why he did it. He just felt compelled. So 
he was possessed then to do it. Yeah. So that's like one of the most interesting things. I can even Google it right now. But yeah, the guy stabbed himself in the chest and they rushed him to the hospital. He was okay, thank God. And the other guy or the woman and the other guy who was with him had no idea. Like they just heard him screaming and they went up there and found him with his own knife in his chest. That is insane. I definitely have not heard about that story before. Let me see here. Paranormal investigator. Oh, come on, phone. Okay. I will find it. Stab self. I got fat fingers, so sometimes it doesn't work out. (laughs) The time a ghost hunter stabbed himself at my axe murder museum. Uh, uh, 2014. Sorry, I got it wrong. Why 2014. did it? In 2014. In 2014, there's Vice, New York's Daily News, paranormal investigator stabbed south during a visit to Iowa's Axe Murder House, where eight were killed. It's all over. Like, you just type that into Google, and you can find all the information you need on that. So I won't go too far into that. But that one, with that specific case where the paranormal investigator harmed himself, I've always thought that would be an interesting one to go check out. It, it definitely would be. It would be one that I'd want to go with some experienced uh, people, I think, uh, yeah. that know what they're doing and uh, are are equipped to deal with that sort of situation, I think. Yeah. So. It's interesting. Like I said, I might not have got all the facts right on that, but from what I remember, that's what it was, like 2013. It was actually 2014. So, like I said, it's always best to just check these things out yourself, but... I will definitely have to look at that because I definitely have not heard of that story. So, you know, I'm going ghost hunting in Iowa this year at the Edinburgh Manor is what the plan is. Really, is, the Edinburgh Manor? Yeah the the insane asylum that closed that, down. That is a very famous uh, insane asylum. Yep, it's a uh, 80 <laughs> confirmed deaths there. Paranormal TV shows, all of them have gone there. And hopefully this year, oh, the plan is that this year I'm going. So, me that and, would uh, be awesome to go to. Yeah. So that and like just talking about the, the Velisca Axe Murder House has always been one on my list that I've always wanted to go to. So the fact that you had it on your list too is makes me excited just because it is such a we'll great have story. To, we'll have to get something going, and, and maybe we'll have to come to the U.S. sometime and get, we'll get have your to passport go there. ready and come on down to. The, the Midwest, we can hit Iowa. It's going to be a while before I get my passport. It's kind of a mess right now. <laughs> uh, we got, we'll figure it out, man. We got time. It's a long wait. People have been <laughs> waiting years for the passports. <laughs> oh, no. That's not even a joke. <laughs> That's crazy. It is. Like, it's kind of a mess. But anyways, moving on. Yeah. Now, <laughs> Villisca, I believe, is one of those places that you have to you have to pay a pretty penny to go and spend the night at. But at the same time, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, location. I, I can't imagine it being that that expensive though. Like me and you have talked about like uh, how different it is from here in the United States versus Canada. How like people charge for paranormal investigations, which is obviously their thing, especially if they're running a business out of there. I understand. Yeah. Now, so. why I think uh, it's so different, like why all, all of our locations have been free. Like we've there's only been. Two two locations, three locations we've had to pay for, and okay. it hasn't been that much. Um, and the reason why I think is because what we're doing isn't known in Saskatchewan. What we're doing isn't that known. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like in the U.S., everyone's doing it. There's always a paranormal investigator going to the location, so they can charge that and make a profit. Where and in, that, I don't blame them at all for that. I mean, how could you, you know, if you're, if you got that much demand for it, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. In, in small, in a small place like Saskatchewan where like we're pretty much the it for investigators that are doing this, you know, like, uh, it's just, there's no sense in putting the place, like charging people when there's not really a demand, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. I know uh, in the past, I've never done it, but I've known people who would break into places and I'd like to tell everybody right now, if you're going to get into paranormal investigating, do not do that. Do not Do ever, not do that. Do that not. is a good way to end up in prison or have a criminal record. So I knew some people a while back and like 
in high school, I met them through a friend. And the next time I ever saw them was on the TV or the news because they broke into a place that was supposedly haunted and they wanted to investigate it. They went about that the all the wrong way. Never do that. Yeah, that's a big no-no. Uh, I just realized that people might not might not have been able to hear you. I oh no! Thing muted. So I just figured I just found that out now. So now you should be able to be heard. That's amazing. Uh, if you're listening to the podcast, we're uh, both live streaming. This is on Curtis's channel, the Purgatory Adventures YouTube channel, and I'm recording it for the podcast, the Local Legends podcast. So that's pretty awesome because I remember I've gone through at least a good 30 minute stream before somebody told me, "Hey, man, we can't hear you." So that's pretty hilarious. We've been going for an hour now and basically yeah. missed everything. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, they could hear me, but not you, so. Hey, they got half the story then. Half the story, yes. <laughs> they, maybe they were thinking you were going crazy just talking to yourself. Maybe, yeah, talking. Well, they could see you on screen talking. Oh, that's so, fair. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's that's awesome. <laughs> oh, man, oh, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah, good times. Good times, good times. I love it. Okay, what more could I ask? I know we've been talking. How long did it mean you've been conversing with each other? An hour on, and on, seven minutes. But I I mean <laughs> more like in, in the aspect of like uh, the first time we contact. You, I believe you contacted me. Oh. What was it like uh, two no, years No, you contacted me. You commented on a video of mine. Okay, that's what it was. <laughs> Back when I was under 300 subscribers. Okay. I Like very early on. And I remember talking to you and telling you, I'm scared I'm not going to hit 500 subscribers. I remember telling you, I was like, you'll hit it. I, you'll I, hit it, no worries. I was like, you'll get there. Yeah. You're, you're putting out good content, and that's what people like is consistent yeah. good content. I remember telling you that, so that's pretty awesome. <laughs> and here I am. We're almost at, we're about to hit 1,000. That's awesome. Only, uh, we're only six away. Heck yeah, dude. Can't argue so, with that. Can't argue with that. Just insane that channels come that far. No, you guys have been killing it. I know you guys put a lot of work into your videos. And uh, you guys travel. What's the farthest you've ever traveled for an investigation? Eight and a half hours. Okay. To yeah. a location. I think it was the Corbett Courthouse. It was eight and a half hours away. Mm. It was the longest trip of our lives. <laughs> eight and a half hours there and eight and a half hours back. And yeah. we did that all in two days. I got you beat, though. I okay, traveled South Dakota to Texas, 17 hours. Oh, yeah, you beat me there. I got you beat, 17 you hours. Got me beat. But that was for a couple different things. I wanted to see where Brandon Lawson went missing, and I filmed out oh, there. Oh, yes. That is just an interesting case, and then I'm probably going to do actually a bonus episode on the podcast about that. And then I also wanted to go to the Goatman's Bridge, and I did that. That was awesome. That was awesome, but the damn camera died on me, and I can't believe I lost most of my footage. But what I did capture was pretty interesting still, so I was pretty excited about that. I had that left of it, but man. that That's to be expected, though, at Goatman's Bridge for your camera to die. Like, that, that is one of, the, one of the number one things that happens on the bridge is stuff goes dead. Well, like, I, I ran into, uh, I wouldn't run into the woods, but I went into the woods, and I ran into what, Look like a pentagram. Somebody had drug out, a, like deep in the wood wooded area there, a pentagram with their foot. What uh, they like, dug a pentagram, like somebody with you know, a like, foot out, like like they'd put their foot in the ground and they uh, did a design of a pentagram out there. But it was what? like as I'm walking farther into the woods, I'm seeing signs like that are saying like uh, "turn back," you know, uh, "death awaits," stuff, something like that. And I'm oh, like, oh, that filming. is insane. And my camera. Which really pissed me off was at full bars. I had full and camera it, battery. It died. It did after I got done filming the area. I'm like, okay, I should probably just get the heck out of here because this that is obviously is some insane. culty stuff. And then my <laughs> camera died, so I start my. I, I had extra batteries in my pocket, so I pull out a battery, throw it in the camera, start recording, and that's the only footage I have is me leaving that area where I'm like, okay, that was really weird because my camera just died, and it was fully that charged. Very bizarre. Yeah. I um. That thing was falling. I actually. Out of the I'm actually, uh, this weekend here coming up, uh, next weekend actually coming up. Uh, so about, it started about a month ago. I got, I got a cool story. Someone contacted me on Messenger 
And they told me about this haunting they've had for the past 17 years. My God. That he's been plagued by a demonic force that has been, like, ripping stuff out of his cupboards and, like, slamming stuff. 17 years he's been dealing with this. And he contacted me asking me what he should do about this. I've had this for 17 years and it will not go away. I've done absolutely everything in my power and it will not go away. What should I do? And he contacted me, and I, I gave him some tips and everything. And basically, we decided that we're going to go and uh, help him out. We're going to go and help him with this problem. So we're going to go and interview him first before we start the camera. And we're going to film it, too. So before we go out and we interview him with the cameras, we're going to do like a pre-interview to make sure he's gotcha. uh, not crazy. Not um, going to, Yeah. <laughs> So we're gonna do like a pre investigate uh, like a pre checkup, I guess it'd be. Um, we're gonna to go to a restaurant. We're gonna sit down. We're gonna have a conversation with him and uh, see if it's worth taking on the case. And uh, we're gonna do an investigation and try and get some evidence on camera. And if we find that there is something happening, I want to see if I can find a priest that can yeah. come in and help this gentleman out, and uh, we'll film it all and. I think it'd be some really cool, interesting investigation. So we're going to try it out and see what happens. I've never done anything like this before. And it'll be interesting to see what happens. It'll be a different, um, a different, something different. So that's amazing. Kind of interested. That that's awesome because that's, that would qualify in my opinion as an active haunted place or haunted uh, investigation. Cause like yeah. a lot of the places you go to are more dormant. Like you have something exactly. happen every once in a while, but if you have one where something like that's happening, that's very active. But that's amazing. Keep that in mind, though. Keep that in mind that by doing this, we're opening ourselves up to danger. Like there's a lot more that could happen. This could be extremely dangerous. What we're doing, you know, like yeah. we could be going into this, and it could be a lot more dangerous than we're actually anticipating. And we're, our guard's going to be down, right? So this thing could actually. If you bring a priest in, it could actually jump from him and attach itself to us and start wreaking havoc in our lives. True. So that is the danger here. But I feel like if you're a paranormal investigator, yep. you should be out there helping people. That is the big thing with the paranormal investigation. And that has always been my dream with this is to help other people with the problems. Because there's no one – there's not very many – people out there that do that so i feel like that is very important to do when you're a paranormal investigator well absolutely and to that i just say be very careful out there because you're right it is dangerous it's a very dangerous situation that you're opening yourself up to you want to hear something insane though absolutely uh after i told the gentleman that we're going to take on your case and we're going to try and help you out i get a message from a random person Telling me that I have to be careful on my next investigation because of the spiritual stuff that's going to happen to us. After I just took on this case with this gentleman, and I'm sitting there reading this, like, did this really just happen? Like, did right. I just get this message? Like, holy. Did you uh, message just, him? I assume you messaged him back. Like, how would you know this? Like, I, I didn't actually. I, I got busy. and you know, not stuff. understandable. There was lots happening, so... Um, I, I haven't never messaged him that. I just seen the message, and I was just like, "This is insane!" This random person just messaged me and told me to be be careful at my next investigation that we're at danger spiritually. And I'm just like, "Wow!" After we after I just literally messaged the guy telling him, and he said he messaged me back saying, "Okay, this is a go," and got this arranged. I get this message, and it was just like kind of just weird how it all coincided. But oh man. Uh, heed that warning. Be very careful, you know? Take precautions, holy water, anything you can. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, because a situation like that, I've I've experienced demonic activity when I was younger before the whole YouTube channel thing, and it's it's intense, and you got to be prepared for that. It really is. Um, actually, I'll tell people about my demonic location where I got my attachment now. Okay. Um. I know my viewers that watch me on this side have heard all about this. Uh, heard all about it. They've heard all about my my story, the battle with the paranormal, with my demonic attachment that I got. Um, I talk about it quite a bit on here. Uh, it started 
basically it started on uh it was my second investigation ever as a paranormal investigator and i uh my buddy mess told me about how haunted his old house used to be and at the time he wasn't living there he was actually living across the street at a different house it okay was, the other house was vacant it was empty right they were trying to sell it and he uh he basically said, you want to come investigate? You know, I know you're into this and we'll, we'll do a weekend thing and we'll set up cameras and we'll do some cool stuff. I agreed. And it was by far one of the most scariest investigations of my life. It was just nothing I've ever done as compared to it. I uh, remember going there to that house. We walk in the front door. And we're playing with the breaker box because we don't want the equipment to mess with the yeah. the ele- the electrical that's in the house, right? So yeah. I uh, we begin playing with the breaker box. It's broad daylight, middle of the day, and we're in the back of the house. And the front door, it's not even like the outside door. It was like a, a like a porch area, so it was like the door. Then there's like an inside door, right? That inside door starts going bang, 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 like closing, opening. And then it stops. And we're freaking out in the house because we're just like, what is going on? Like, we've only been in here five minutes and this is happening. Right. And anyways, we leave. Uh, the few hours later, buddy, a buddy of ours shows up and we're telling him about the door and everything. And I remember, you know, all, there's I think there was five of us. We're sitting in a circle on the floor. My buddy's got a digital recorder on the floor beside him. We get up uh, where we're sitting there in the circle and we hear the closet door at the end of the hallway slide shut, like slam shut. We get up from our seats. We go to check it out. And just as we do that, my buddy has a recorder on the ground and it slides across the ground. It goes flying. And we're freaking out because of the series of events that just happened. All this stuff moving around and flying and uh, stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, we were freaking out, and I remember leaving, and uh, we or we come back a few hours later, and we're in the house again. Um, buddy goes to go into one of the back rooms, and as he goes, a big wooden door slams in his face, and he backs up, hits a ladder, it goes through the window. Oh, no. <laughs> it was insane. It was a crazy investigation, and I remember when we were setting up for the nighttime investigation, um... Buddy left his cell phone at the house. And we were back across the street at the current place where he was living. And the phone rings over there. So he picks it up. And he looks at me like with the whitest look I've ever seen. And he's like, my cell phone just called me. And I'm like, what? You're, how is that possible? Your, your phone's over there at the other place. What? And he, he hit the redial button. And he got his answering machine of his cell phone. So somehow his cell phone called him from the other house. What? To the, where he was playing. It was like the scariest thing I've ever heard. I got EVPs from that place. So what we did at nighttime is we were terrified to go in that house. We were done with it. We took a digital recorder. We set it inside the house and we left it record for like an hour. And I caught the craziest EVP I've ever captured in my life. It's on my YouTube channel. You can go check it out. Um... You can hear these footsteps, like, tromping. You can hear it go boom, boom, boom. And then you can hear, like, cupboards slamming, like, closing and stuff. I captured a piano playing in the house. There's no furniture in the house because there's no one living there, so there's no furniture at all, right? Um, You can hear piano playing in there. You can hear wind chimes going off. You can hear uh, footsteps. You can hear... uh, Oh, what else is there? I think that's it. But there is some crazy stuff. Um... Oh, sorry. That's amazing. That is but so... yeah, it was, it was insane. It was a crazy investigation. Sounds like that's also a very active one. Also, one more. I got one more story about that. No, part. no, absolutely. Um, the next day after all this has happened, we come back. Me and my buddy. He actually had a f- video camera because we're like, we're gonna videotape this crap, right? Yeah. And you found, we found out very quickly why you don't taunt entities. Because when you do that, bad stuff happens. Yep. And 
my buddy goes into that house and he starts saying that uh, this is my house. If you want us gone, you got to do something, right? And you can hear come over the tape a very clear voice that says no, like really loud, like it says no, like in a really weird voice. And then my buddy's like, my back is burning, my, my back, and he starts freaking out. And we go into the kitchen, and I take, I lift up his shirt, and there is a claw mark, three claw marks that go across his back. Jesus. And I grab the video camera, and I videotape it. I have it on camera, the whole series of events leading up to him getting attacked. And I have the actual scratches on camera. Ah, oh, man, you know, listening to stories like that, where somebody gets scratched or attacked in a house that's very active, in my mind, my mind just went to this weird place. Like, I wonder how many spirits slash evil, you know, spirits are in houses right now where it's actually not very active. It's just not moving. And all that it would take is for somebody to taunt it to end up like being attacked like that. Yeah, uh, exactly. You never know if you're actually alone in that situation or not. And, and clearly in that situation, you guys were not. So that's we crazy. were not. It was uh, it was a very scary one. It was one that I will uh, I'll personally never forget. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's an impressive one and very <laughs> it's impressive and very at the time freaky because obviously you go into the places we're all expecting or hoping not expecting but hoping to catch something you know, a miraculous. I would say on camera. Yeah. And whenever you finally do, that's like get something like that. That's pretty. Uh, makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Yeah, definitely. It just a very insane investigation. Yeah, I know. Whenever I leave a location, I always uh make sure to tell any spirits around and whatnot that hey, I'm leaving and you're not allowed to come with me. Do you ever do any like goodbye rituals like that? Mm, not really. We probably should, but we don't. We kind of just. All right, we bye. We just kind of, bye, yeah. <laughs> or no, just that's... like, thanks for the evidence, and we kind of just leave. We kind of right. don't really have a ritual that we do when we leave. We kind of just leave. <laughs> yeah, I get that. No, that's kind of just like the thing that I was always told is, especially from like the native part of my family has always been saying, whenever you do something like this, you're not usually supposed to do it. But whenever you do, make sure you leave. You tell this, whatever it is that you were with, that it's not allowed to follow you home. So that's yes, what we do. that's one thing that we do do when we. That's one thing we do when we believe it's bad. Yeah, we believe that what we're communicating with is bad. So never give it permission. Never give anything permission to to follow you. Never give it permission to enter your body either. That is bad. Um, we were... <laughs> and to add on that, never pretend to be possessed around anything like that because I have seen a girl who was pretending to be possessed get possessed while pretending to be possessed. And like, she's a bad actress. That's all I can tell you about that until she wasn't acting anymore. And then it's just like, holy crap, that was an instant change. Yeah. And I don't, that, get, I've yeah. never seen anyone pretend to be possessed before. So that's, that's different. This girl was doing it for attention from the, mm. she's kind of like getting kicked out of her house or whatever. And it was like, I wasn't even investigating at the time. I was like maybe 12 years old and this lady was throwing herself around and, acting all weird and I, I don't want to get too much into the story but you could see it in her eyes where she's pretending to be possessed and everybody's just like okay show's over let's get the fuck out of here now <laughs> and then something changes where her eyes changed and her whole demeanor changed and she stopped acting like she's pretending and something actually took over and it wasn't her anymore and we we're just like yeah. well fuck <laughs> <laughs> And I was I was asked at that point as a child, we need you to step outside. And I was like, all right. So, yeah, I remember seeing and that. And that's an that's why when you go and you do an investigation of somebody, somebody's home, somebody's personal life, you got to be very careful because they could be just putting it up as a show, right, to get attention. Exactly. So. As upsetting as that is, there are a lot of people that fake uh, the paranormal. The evidence. Not only just that, not only just that, it could also be because they have a uh, a mental illness, right? Yes, like it there's could be also that. a mental disorder. So, yep, a hundred percent, it could be a mental disorder. And in the world that we're living in nowadays, it feels like a lot of that is going unchecked. Yep. So we need to be very careful of that. Very cautious on whose home we go into. Exactly, so. exactly, and that's just good yeah. advice for everybody at this point. For everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so. 
Well, so honestly, that's why that's why as uh, beginner and paranormal investigators, if you're starting, if you want to go out and you want to help people, you got to sit down with people first and like talk with them in public before you just go into their home and get a sense of you know who they are. You know if they're mentally all right, because you'll know right away if they're mentally stable or not. So and uh, you, this you'll thing just know right here is a good tool for your safety is to tell somebody where you're going. Send them a picture of who you're with, a license plate, uh, address, anything yep. like that. If you're going into somebody's house, you take a picture of them with their permission or without their permission for your own safety and share it with a family friend or somebody that, that knows where you That is a very are. good idea, actually. That is something we're going to do. <laughs> you do that, absolutely. That, <laughs> that is something I'm going to do. When Just in go. case uh, nobody's seen Curtis for a week and they have to go and find some <laughs> find you in somebody's basement. It's, I, it, I'm actually quite nervous because I've never, ever done something like this. I've never gone to someone's home before. So yeah, I'm a little you, nervous to do this, but I got, I have had people message me and say, there's a ghost in my house. Come get rid of it. And like, it was quite obvious that this person was struggling from, uh, uh, schizophrenia, uh, because yeah. they were talking some really crazy stuff. Like I can't even, I can't even say what they're saying no, that's because fine. it was so like it wasn't bad, but it was just so bizarre that you kind of just have to read the messages to kind of understand. And I'll say when I'm when, when we're done with this, I'll send you them. I'll screenshot you. Oh yeah, perfect. And send it to you because they are so bizarre that like you just know this guy has schizophrenia. Like there's there's no way he doesn't. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, just talk with the person through messenger, and then you'll know that this person is not like this person's nuts. So yeah. And, and they should probably stay away. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, always be safe out there. Is all I can say about that. Exactly. At this point, Curtis, I think we're probably going to end the podcast. Okay. But I do want to thank you again because I am very interested in what you're doing. I think a lot of people here who are listening come across this. Uh, people I know that are just going to check it out for the fun of it. Check out Curtis over at Purgatory Adventures and go ahead and tell everybody what you got going on, where they could find you. You know, all that stuff, all the good information. So you can uh, find us over at uh, Purgatory Adventures on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's where we upload all of our content. If you want to keep up to date on where we're going next, our planned investigations, even future live streams, you can uh, go to our Facebook group. We have a Facebook group where I'm constantly active or I'm also constantly active in the community tab on our youtube page you can also find us on there too if you don't have facebook so uh tons of ways also we have a TikTok too yep. you can go give that a follow we post clips from our channel on there uh but yeah that's that's where you can find us that's awesome i really do appreciate this so with that being said everybody this is local legends podcast and uh thanks for hanging out with us good night